Good morning. I always say it's good to see you, but I don't see you at all. It's good to be seen by you. I guess yesterday I was seen by a whole lot of people. I don't know what's going on, but there are like 160 views of this according to Facebook. Now they might have all been 20 second views. I don't know. I don't know how many people watched the whole thing or much of it at all. Only about 50 of them were mine. <laughs> of course, that's not really true. I did. I do watch a little bit of it just to see how big of a fool I'm making of myself. But um. <clears throat> But here's Stanley, my dog. Um, he's had a good day so far. We went for a walk. He, um, I don't know, basically all he's done is walk and sleep. I tried to feed him, but he wasn't hungry. You may have noticed something, may notice something different above my head. I was watching this thing on um, the news one day. They were interviewing this lady about about the different news people who are all reporting from their homes and you know what their homes look like and I thought mine just has this blank wall so I bought some artwork and hung them up cuz normally my my um I decorate in mid-american bachelor I guess you know basically nothing uh, <laughs> but on the wall here I have these two you can't really see them, I'll show them to you both, but it's the artwork of Hei Ki, who's a Chinese Christian artist who now lives in California. And I, 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 I like his work, it's very colorful. But anyway, this is um, right, the prodigal son right behind me. I don't know if you can see it very well. But anyway, look him up, H-E-Q-I. Look up the artwork of Hei Ki, I think you'll find it. Um, it's just really colorful and bright and um, uplifting and provocative at the same time because you know, it's a different way of looking at, at Jesus. Um, we like looking at Jesus from a surfer to Jesus, you know, with the long blonde hair, blue eyes, and um, <clears throat> we don't necessarily want to see Jesus, the brown-skinned Middle Eastern um, person. And of course, this is more of an Asian view of, of Jesus. But anyway, I'm going to put Stanley out in the hallway, and we'll get to work talking about Stanley Jones. Come on, Stanley. Come on, outside. Come on, good boy. He doesn't like to go out there. He wants to be with us, but he wants to be in my way all the time. Um, anyway, we're kind of looking at this book, The Kingdom of God is the Kingdom of God Realism by E. Stanley Jones, and... You know, there's lots of good stuff in here, and I i don't want to dwell too much because we are going through Christian maturity as well, but I think the kingdom of God and Christian maturity are so intertwined. It, it's basically the same thing. To, if you're a mature Christian, you're living in the kingdom of God, which is basically um, obeying Jesus, living the way of Jesus, Jesus, the way God, Jesus commanded. So, um, and I, we looked at a couple of other books, Christian's Alternative to Communism and the Choice Before Us, or Christ's Alternative to Communism and the Choice Before Us, which were both um, written in response to the rise of communism, of course, the first one, and the second one, Nazism, Fascism, as well as Communism, and mentioned Capitalism, too. This one talks a little bit about capitalism, and, you know, he did, I think he probably would have said that capitalism was the best we have, but unfettered capitalism is unchristian. Because there's a, a the nature of competition, which I think there's a healthy competition, but there's unhealthy competition as well. And he said, competitive capitalism and Christianity tried to come to a working alliance. Christianity would take over the spiritual portions of life and leave the economic and hence the social and political relations to a selfish struggle for profit. The man of business became two men. On Sunday, a man of cooperation and love, and on Monday, a man of competition and self-accumulation. He was not a hypocrite, far from it. He was a victim of a division with which Christianity took within itself. He tried to be two men at once, and at the same time, a Christian man with love and mutual aid as the driving forces of his life, and an economic man with selfishness and mutual elimination as the driving forces of his life. The awakened modern Christian is a very unhappy man, for he knows that he is a house divided against itself. He knows that the social structure he has built up is a house built on sand. The storms and floods are beating on it, and he knows that the crash is imminent. 
the house is divided against itself. And it basically, you know, we see this in our economy where the, the, you know, look at the salaries of people. The salaries of the CEOs have just gone up astronomically, but the salaries of everyone else has pretty much stayed the same. And um, there's something definitely wrong with that picture. And I think that we are so afraid sometimes of, of being, you know, we don't want to be socialist the way the con the Russians were socialists and communists. We don't want to be that. We certainly don't want to be Nazis and fascists. And, you know, we sit, recognize the value of capitalism. But um, I think that when we, we are afraid to criticize capitalism as well, because if we do, we're saying we're un-American. And I think that the whole idea about the kingdom of God and the whole reason I got into Jones, when I started reading Jones, is at first I saw him pointing fingers at other Christians, you know, saying they're not really Christian, they're not following. And I was thinking, yeah, Christianity today doesn't seem very Christ-like in so many ways. But then I started reading him and I said, he was really saying I was not as Christian as I should be. And he was right. When I look at my life and my selfishness, my materialism, um, I... <clears throat> My attitudes towards people sometimes are not Christian. And I think that that's the reason Jones convicts me, because Jesus convicts me if we really pay attention to what Jesus is saying. It convicts all of us that the way of Jesus is, is um, so much different from the way we want the way of Jesus to be. Uh, well, I'll just show this. This is another um, <clears throat> poster I have. This is, you won't be able to see it, but but it's, um, washing the disciples' feet was by Heike also. And um, and I, I bought this because I feel like that that is, that's really the picture of who we are supposed to be in the world. Apart from the cross, Jesus washing the feet of the disciples is the most powerful image of, of the character and nature of God and the care and character and nature of who we should be in the world. I mean, Jesus washing, who wants to wash anybody's stinky feet? Nobody does. But Jesus washed the feet of his disciples, including Peter, who would deny him, including Judas, who would betray him. I think this powerful, powerful stuff. And that's who we should be in the world. And we are very much into, we are very selfish in this world. And we, we have judgmental attitudes and we look down on other people who don't agree with us or don't believe exactly the same way that we believe and um and we don't even believe what we say we believe we say we're followers of jesus and yet we fall so short because we want we want our part first before we give any to the rest of the world and that's you know america first i don't think that's christian seek first the kingdom of god okay Christian maturity. <clears throat> um, we're looking at Thursday, week four, God comes to us. And our scripture passage is Matthew 1, 21 through 23. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. The gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God. And now our passage. God comes to us. We saw yesterday that the first step, the very first step in maturity is to be re reconciled with God, our Father. As long as the feeling of inner estrangement from God is eating at the center of our being, we will never be mature. And at this place, there are just two types of religion. The one type tries to meet God in reconciliation and realization at the top rung of a long ladder. The other meets God at the lowest rung. This is God who washes the feet of, the, of his disciples or, and even the one who betrayed him. Um, and the one we go to God, climbing up by our own good deeds, by our prayers, by our mort by mortifying of ourselves, by our gaining of merit, by our, our obedience to rites and ceremonies, and by our faithfulness to law and duty. We can earn our maturity and our realization of God. Everywhere except the Christian way belongs to this 
every way except the Christian way belongs to this category. It is man's search up for God. The Christian way is quite different. We do not climb to him and meet him at the top rung. He comes down the ladder to us and meets us on the lowest rung. He receives us as sinners. I came not to call the righteous, but sinners. That is new, and that is revolutionary. It reverses all the values of all the religions, including the Jewish. For Judaism says, God loves those and fellowships with those who keep his law. That means you meet him at the top of the ladder. Hinduism says, practice austerities, renounce samsara, the world order, shut out everything but the realization of God, and you will find him. Again, at the top of the ladder. Islam says, pray five times a day, fast, obey, Allah, obey all Allah's commands, and you will get heaven and God at the end. Again, at the top of the ladder. Unitarianism says, salvation by character. Again, at the top of the ladder. Modern humanism says, serve your neighbor, do good to all, and it will be well with you. Again, at the top of the ladder. Only one dared reverse all this, and they crucified him for it. Jesus. He rendered vain all of these attempts at self-salvation and said, God isn't at the top of the ladder. He is at the bottom. Breathtaking. Now, I think, you know... Our, 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 we got to be careful with this because that doesn't mean we wait at the bottom and God comes to us and then we do nothing. In response to God meeting us at the bottom, we recognize the the climbing the ladder, the doing good in the world is not an order to, a way to earn salvation. It is a result of our salvation. It is the bearing fruit of what God is doing in us and through us. We, uh, that's important. Too many times, we, our, our good deeds are not going to save us. But we were saved so we could do good, good deeds. Here's our prayer for today. Oh Jesus, what can I say? I am speechless before the wonder of this. I am in the dust, but there I find you, in the dust before me, ready to receive me and lift me to the highest heaven. O oh, gracious condescension, I belong to you forever. Amen. And our affirmation of the day, only empty hands can take this gift. My uplifted hands are empty. Jesus is Lord.